Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. My name is Sarah and I am happy to be with you here on this Thursday for another episode of the podcast. Wondering how your week is going, if you're having a a good first week of October, maybe enjoying some beautiful fall colors somewhere, maybe enjoying some rain. We had rain this week, it was amazing. You know, it's Northern California and you have to celebrate the little things when you get rain. It wasn't a lot, but it was there and I loved every minute of it, even though it was still 80 degrees and humid, (laughs) but, um, it's been a bit of a crazy week around here as well for a variety of reasons. And as such, I've decided that, um, I am going to revisit one of my favorite episodes and one of my favorite book series from childhood, which is the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Loveless. I loved this series as a child and I love doing this episode. So I'm going to reshare it and then be back with you again next week. New episode on Tuesday, interview with author Sonia Faruqi about her debut fiction. She's written nonfiction before, but debut fiction novel called The Oyster Thief. So definitely tune in for that on Tuesday. And in the meantime, enjoy this episode. If you've listened before, then you've heard me say it a million times how I love to read. Obviously, I I wouldn't probably do a book podcast if I didn't love to read. I come from a family of readers. My dad was a, is a retired librarian. He was the K-12 librarian uh, most of my growing up and uh, going to school years. My mom is an avid reader and uh, instilled that love in all of us. We lived next door to the public library in my hometown, which was awesome because it meant that I could just go next door and get a book anytime I wanted, at least when the library was open. My parents bought us books on a regular basis from book fairs for birthdays and Christmases. We just were a family of readers, and I always loved it. And I was maybe a bit of an odd kid, you know, maybe not, but in terms of the what other kids might think of their childhoods, I did like to go outside and play. I went outside and played with my friends and rode my bike and did all kinds of things, but I also loved just as much to stay inside and read a book. And sometimes even in the summer, my mom would occasionally have to kick me out to go outside and at least read my book outside if I wasn't going to play outside because, you know, I needed to go out and soak up some of that nice fresh air and that good vitamin D from the sun and all of that good stuff. So uh, I, as I said, I loved books. And I mentioned a few weeks ago when I did uh, the podcast about memoirs, some of the memoirs I've read recently, that I also loved reading I was that kid that that liked being assigned autobiographies and autobiographies in school. I didn't always enjoy all of them, but I never had a problem being assigned them because I really loved learning about different people, learning about different time periods and seeing how people lived during those time periods. I knew where the section, the auto, the biography section was in the school library and in the public library. And I just liked going and finding a book to read about someone's life and find out what it was like to live when and where they lived. And I think that's probably why I loved the Little House on the Prairie books so much. And I do want to do a podcast episode on that series at one point. But it's also why I loved the series that I'm going to talk about today so much. And that is the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Loveless. I think my mom probably introduced these books to me. I think she did. She had read them during her childhood or uh, her lifetime at some point. And either my mom introduced them to me or I just found them at the library. But I feel like it was my mom. Hi, mom. If you're listening, you can correct me next time I talk to you. Um, 
But I just love them. I fell in love with them. I fell in love with the characters. I fell in love with the story. So that is what I'm going to talk about today. And I should probably actually get to that instead of telling you all about my random childhood. But the books are were written in the 1940s. The first one was published in 1940. But they take place during the time that Maud Hart Loveless herself was growing up. They aren't autobiogra- autobiographies, but there are numerous autobiographical elements to them. In fact, they are so much of her childhood is represented in these books that a lot of her readers used to send her letters to find out really which parts were true and which parts wit- weren't true. It is about her childhood. She grew up in Mankato, Minnesota. That becomes Deep Valley in the books. And I love this on the website. There is a website that is the, the BetsyTaseySociety.org. And it talks about uh, Maud Hart Loveless, who was born April 25th, 1892. So, hey, this is perfect timing. I should have done this one last week if I had realized I could have done it on her birthday, but I'm a week late. I apologize. Anyway, so she was born April 25th, 1892 in Mankato, Minnesota. And like Betsy, who's one of the main characters of this series, she followed her mother around the house at age five, asking questions such as, how do you spell going down the street (laughs) for the stories that she had already begun to write? So Betsy in the books is a writer. And so you can see where it's based on her, on, on Loveless's life. The, the Hart family left Mankato shortly after Maud's high school graduation in 1910 and settled in Minneapolis, and that happens in the books as well. So at any rate, uh, this says the, the Betsy Tacey books are based very closely on Maud's own life. She says, I could make it all up, but in these Betsy Tacey stories, I love to work from real incidents. And that's something that she wrote about them. So... Here is some of the background on the books. In case you've never heard of them, they are about two... uh, It's Betsy Tacey, but there are other characters in this book. Betsy Tacey are best friends. They live across the street from each other. The description of the first book is as follows. And the first book is listed as the age level of five to seven years. So you, uh, if you want to read these with your children or if you want your children to read them, really they can grow up with Betsy and Tacey because the first few books are about Betsy and Tacey in their elementary years. And then it's their high school years. And finally, uh, Betsy, there's I think two books where Betsy is an adult and the last one is called Betsy's Wedding. So you really do grow up with Betsy and travel with her throughout her lifetime. There are uh, 13 books in the series. There are most of them are based on, on directly on Betsy and Tacy's relationship, but then there's a couple that have some of the uh, other characters, and so they're seen from the, their perspective, the perspective of those other characters. So again, the the summary of the first book, just called Betsy Tacy is after Betsy and Tacy become best friends at Betsy's fifth birthday party, they are inseparable. Betsy is lively and imaginative, invents wonderful games, and can make up stories. Tacy, though bashful with people she doesn't know well, is just as merry as Betsy and is a wonderful companion. Together they picnic, explore, dress up, go calling, and gaze upon a certain chocolate-colored house where they eventually meet a new friend, Tib. So, that is the story. It's a, it's a very sweet story about two young girls who meet and then eventually meet a third young girl and they become inseparable. Both girls have older sisters that they are constantly kind of emulating and in competition with, as so often happens with older and younger sisters. I can relate with my older sister who I love very much, but, you know, I always wanted to tag around after her when she, I was little, and she didn't always want me to with, to be with her, so there's a lot of that sibling rivalry in these books. Betsy Tacy, the book is Betsy hyphen Tacy. So they spend so much time together. They're always seen together that pretty soon their name just becomes Betsy Tacy. If you see one without the other, it becomes kind of weird. In fact, the, the neighborhood boys like to tease them when they see one without the other. And really the only time that you do see them without the other one is when they go to church. They do go to different churches. They go to different denominations. So other than that, they're pretty much always together. They're best friends. They do everything together. Betsy loves to make up stories. She's got a wonderful imagination. She loves to write. Tacy is, uh, as it said, bashful, a little bit shy with people that she doesn't know, but she is game for Betsy's adventures. She comes up with her own adventures. They have all of these wonderful times. 
And of course, the book takes place in a completely different time period than the one that I grew up in and probably the one that you grew up in and the one that your children are growing up in. So the books start out before the turn of the century. Maud Hart Lovelace was born in 1892. So if they're loosely based on her life, more than loosely based on her life, but you can figure that if Betsy is five at the beginning, then it's, you know, toward the end of this turn of the century. So her, her dad drives the the horse and cart home. They don't have an automobile. In fact, there's a scene in one of the books where one of the girls gets to ride in an automobile, the first that they see in Deep Valley. So there's this whole interesting part where you have new technology coming to them. There's a part in one of the later books also where Betsy's family gets a telephone and of course, there's not that many people that they can call because not that many other people in the in the town have a telephone. So it's this really exciting time, but uh, there aren't too many people that you can call when not everyone, of course, has a telephone. So it's very different from our experience now, and yet there are things that, of course, are constant. There are things like friendship and imagination and playing and all of these wonderful things. And the constant with Betsy's imagination is that she wants to be a writer. She's always writing throughout the books, and you can imagine that Maud Hart Lovelace was the same way, and that is what inspired her then eventually to write these books. One thing she did do and that I read somewhere was that she would tell these stories of her childhood to her own daughter, and her own daughter enjoyed them so much that it eventually inspired her to write this series. And I do want to talk more about these books because they are some of my favorite books from my childhood, but we are going to take our first break, so please stay tuned, and I will be right back. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. We are talking today about the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Loveless, one of my favorite books from childhood. And I loved these books so much growing up that I remember doing uh, a book report, I think, for, I, I don't even remember which one of the books it was, but I was doing a book report. And I can't draw to save my life. I'm a terrible drawer. I can barely draw a straight line with a ruler. But my mom is quite a good artist, and these books have really wonderful illustrations. They're they're really fun. They capture the essence of the story, kind of the whimsy of the story, capture the characters, and they have really great drawings. So not only are they chapter books, but they're chapter books with pictures, which is always fun for kids, right? So I was doing this book report, and my mom was helping me to uh, draw some of the pictures to to try to draw some of the pictures that were in the book. And um, she was really patient with me and very helpful. And I have no idea how it turned out. I think I blocked it. But I loved these books. And that is just a little bit of an aside. And I wasn't sure, as an adult, I read them again not very long ago. I was thinking about them, and I thought, I really want to go back and read those books. And I wonder if anybody else even remembers those books. And so I checked them out. No, actually, I think I, I bought the first four. There's a, a, a collection of the first four that you can get in one book. And so I bought that for my Kindle. And then I started looking on social media. The Book Review Podcast follows a lot of authors and a lot of different things. Uh, and you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. And did you like that little plug? Instagram and, and Tumblr also. But there is a lot of people online who love the Betsy Tacey books just as much as I do. In fact, they have a Twitter account. I don't know who maintains it, but you can follow Betsy Tacey on Twitter. And when you start to do some research, there is a Betsy Tacey Society in Mankato. You can go and see the houses where where Maud Hart Lovelace and her best friend grew up and see 
what you know see where they lived and experience a little bit of that there's uh there's on the website that i was talking about earlier you could have betsy tacy themed birthday parties and you could do all kinds of stuff so if you are one of those parents who really likes to have a multi-sensory experience with your children's books you know take it beyond just reading something and you're up for a road trip and you're near or you know you want to go to mankato i i have no association with with this at all whatsoever i'm just saying i think it would be really cool to go to Mankato and go see the Betsy Tacey houses and explore. Uh, I've been to Minnesota. I haven't been to Mankato. I know a few people from Mankato, but I think it would be fun to go. And if I had thought about it as a kid, I'm sure I would have loved to have had a Betsy Tacey birthday party. Anyway, so these books start out before the turn of the 20th century. There are, you know, very few cars. The technology is different, but then you, you start to see it uh, expanding and broadening and it ends the the series ends with as I said Betsy's wedding but before Betsy's wedding she takes a year off from college she does go to college and this is in the 19 teens and she decides to spend a year traveling around Europe and that's in one of the books her experience is doing that and that trip is cut short because of the beginning of World War One so you really do get some great historical events in these books if you are interested in history if you're interested in just in social history especially and that is the way people live during certain time periods, then these are a great way to engage your children in seeing how, you know, different different period different time periods looked and felt and how things were different, but how things are the same, you know, as I said, in terms of friendship, in terms of family dynamics, in terms of all of those things. So I think it's a really great way to engage kids of all ages because as I said they can grow up with Betsy Tacy and Tib and as they go through elementary and then high school and finally college and getting married and all of those things figuring out what they're going to do with their lives etc it is written in a different time so you know there are if you're looking for like a good feminist manifesto this isn't necessarily it moms are moms are stay at home moms they're housewives dads go off and do their job and come back and and those sorts of things there's nothing there's nothing sort of progressive about these books but that's okay again i'm saying it's a different time but what was interesting to me is that in one of these books betsy and tacy uh and i believe tib on one of their adventures they go off exploring and they like to go you know it was at a time when you could just let your kids roam around freely and go wherever they want as long as they came home by dinner time and they discover that there is a community that they've never been to. It's called Little Syria, and it is full of Syrian immigrants that have moved to this area in Minnesota, and they make a new friend, and they learn some different stories, and they learn about a new culture. And there are some ways that they speak about the immigrants that you know, it might make our modern sensibilities feel a little uncomfortable. There's nothing, you know, like really horrible that would just make you go, oh my gosh, we cannot possibly read this. This is terrible. But it's a different way of looking at it. But it's also a way we see Betsy and Tacy and Tib encountering something that they're not sure about. And so they encounter this group of people. They encounter a, a little girl about their age, make friends with her, learn more about her culture and her her family's culture before they moved when they were still in Syria. And it's really a wonderful way. It's also a way to then engage in how do we have conversations with our kids about things that are different? How do we have conversations with our kids about things that they don't understand? So uh, the, these books really do open up those conversation possibilities. And I am not a person that has, you know, a, a degree in child psychology or in family psychology or anything like that. I just like when I read books that I think, yes, this is a talking point. This is something that would open up conversation and make it so that we can have an entree into things that might be difficult to talk about. And later on, when Betsy and Tacy are in high school, Betsy really wants to fit in or she wants to attract the attention of a boy, you know, as often happens as we get older. And there's one book where she she tries to give herself a makeover. She tries not just a physical makeover, but she tries to be 
different in personality. She refers to her older sister, Julia, as a siren, which is not a term that we use so much anymore. But you can understand that, you know, her older sister may have been a little more girly than she was. Betsy was definitely a tomboy. She liked to climb trees and do all those great things. And she tries to gain the attention of this boy who does, you know, look at her in a different way when she comes back from her 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 personal makeover and he but they she soon learns that while she can expand upon her personality and make changes in her life she shouldn't cre- re- try to recreate herself for someone else so again there's some good talking points in there and i remember reading this book when i, I don't even remember how old i was maybe about betsy's age maybe you know it, these take place when she was in high school. I may have been in junior high at the time. I don't remember. But there's this way of walking that she describes. And I cannot for the life of me remember what it was. I don't have the book to look it up. But there's this way of walking. She like tries to imitate, um, I think, like an, an actress's way of walking or something. And if I'm remembering correctly, and if you've read the book and you remember, you can correct me, please. There, it's a slouch or something. And I remember trying to imitate this walk. I had absolutely no idea what it looked like or what it was or who the person that she was imitating was. But I tried to imitate this in, you know, the late 80s, the late 1980s. I'm trying to imitate what Betsy is doing in the early 1900s, the 1910s sometime. And that's what the effect of these books had on me. I was trying to do this this super cool walk and I had no idea what it looked like. And I was so not super cool. And I'm I'm sure trying to emulate this walk from these books that were written, you know, what my friends might have thought of as forever ago and why would I want to read them was not making me any cooler than I already wasn't. So on that note, I think we are going to take our second break. And when we come back, we'll finish up talking about the Betsy Tacey series. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. We have been talking about the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Loveless. And as is always the case, don't just take my word for it. I assume that you don't when it comes to books, that you do your own research. And when I went looking for some reviews, I found basically positive reviews saying a lot of the same things that I'm saying, that even though the girls in these books were... Um, written that they they lived quote unquote lived but you know the the characters they were based on lived over a hundred years ago they're still very relatable there are a few things that you might need to look up and that is where of course search engines are your friend you can look up and learn new things something that you might not have known and that's always for me that's always fun I don't know not everyone likes the same things that I do but I love to look up and learn new things and find out what different words mean and the the few negative reviews that I could find were more about you know the vocabulary was a little difficult for her child her child didn't understand it and that's something to keep in mind that there may be things that are a little more difficult to understand but hopefully you will not you know your child won't be reading these in a vacuum you'll it'll open up conversations you can help with some of those vocabulary or some of those concepts that might be a little confusing 
And I just, as I've said, I really love them, and I'm fascinated by the fact that there are so many other people that have these same childhood memories as I do, even though these books, you know, they weren't written during my lifetime. They were written much more before my lifetime and before a lot of the people who are reading them and still fascinated by them. So they definitely hold up. I would encourage you to check them out. You can also, you know, you, as I said, there's a Betsy Tacey Society that is uh, has a presence in Mankato, Minnesota, that they have restored the the homes of some of the characters of the books. So Maud Hart Lovelace's childhood home, etc. And you can do tours and they have, the, the website is pretty interesting and you can learn more about the author Maud Hart Lovelace and some of her other books. She did write other things, although the Betsy Tacey series is definitely her best known, but she had a really interesting life, it seems like, and you learn some of that in these books, but then you also learn more about her life as you do some more reading on her and find out. So uh, on a side note, before I conclude, I would say that I think part of what I love about, I mean, I loved as a kid learning new things and learning about Betsy and Tacey and Tib and all their friends in this in this world that I could imagine, but I couldn't really quite envision living in, you know, uh, yes and no. You know, I, I was used to my own my own way of growing up. And so it was fun to put myself into a different circumstance, although I, I didn't always fully understand everything. What I really loved was imagining the clothes. <laughs> I don't know why, but I had a fascination with um, button hooks as a kid. And that's when you have those high top shoes that button and you had to have the hook to pull the button through the the buttonhole. So, you know, any description of that and the, the long dresses and the different styles and the different hairstyles I was fascinated with. And that actually reminds me that there's a scene where the girls are trying to make a memory. Someone has died and they are trying to think of ways that, you know, if they were to die, how would they, how would, how would someone remember them? And it's kind of a deep, you know, it's a very deep uh, conversation for young girls to have, but it was the reality of their, their lives at the time. And they decide that what they want to do is save some of their hair. And so like kids everywhere, they experiment with the scissors and <laughs> they, uh, Tacey has long ringlets. They're always talking about her beautiful ringlets. And she cuts one of the ringlets off thinking that this will be a great way to, you know, to save and to be remembered by. But then her head is uneven. And so one of the other girls <laughs> cuts off half of her ringlets just on one side of her head. And then they do, they, they each cut their hair really badly. So, you know, even though they were written over a hundred years ago, kids are still doing some of the same thing. Maybe not for the same reasons, but scissors and hair always seem to find each other in uh, young children. So there's humor, there's warmth, there are friendships that blossom and grow and, the, and characters that you can grow up with or your children can grow up with. And I cannot recommend this series enough. I loved it. I still love it. And I hope that you will check it out if it sounds like something that you are interested in. So that is my my very long uh, sort of love letter to Maud Hart Lovelace's Betsy Tacey series. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that was past Sarah thanking you for joining her for that episode. This is current Sarah, uh, still apparently referring to herself in the third person, but thanking you again for joining me for this episode as we revisited the Betsy Tacey episode. And I realized after I'd recorded the intro that the current, the original episode was episode 14 and this is episode 114. So clearly it was fate, right? Must be or possibly just coincidence. Either way, I'm okay with that. Again, join me on Tuesday when I have a, an interview with author Sonia Faruqi about her book, The Oyster Thief. It is both science fiction and fantasy, a little bit of romance, and um, you're going to definitely want to tune in for that interview. And there's a giveaway. So join me on Tuesday. In the meantime, have a wonderful weekend. Go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.